السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم يا مقلب القلوب والأبصار ثبت قلوبنا على دينك بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم جزا إن شاء الله we will be talking about the second, the tafsir of the second part of Surah Al-Mulk, and we uh, will be starting with Ayat 12. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inna al-ladhina yakhshawna rabbahum bil-ghaybi lahum maghfiratun wa ajrun kabir. Indeed, those who fear their Lord unseen will have forgiveness and great reward. So fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, does not happen unless someone knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Well, and the best who know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the scholars. Allah says in the Quran, إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاءِ Only those uh, fear Allah from among his servants who have knowledge. And the more you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more fear you will have to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Wallahi, inni la'akhshakum lillahi wa atqaakum lah. He is swearing that he is the most person who fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, the, uh, the first person uh, who has taqwa to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because he knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna alladheena yakhshawna rabbahum. Those who fear their Lord. In Surah Al-Waqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلِمَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ جَنَّتَانِ For him who feared the standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there will be two gardens. So fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the unseen has three uh, forms. The first one is that Someone fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he fears meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <clears throat> on the day of judgment. Because we all know that there is no doubt there will be a day of judgment and we will all be uh, uh, meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the first uh, form of fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah said, <clears throat> Indeed, you are laboring uh, toward your Lord with great exertion. And you will meet him. Definitely, there will be a day that we will all meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So fearing that day, makes people, most of the believers, leave out those things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had ordered uh, the righteous people, uh, ordered people not to do, because they know that they are meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they won't do these bad deeds in order not to feel ashamed in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they stand before him. The second part, the second form of fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is called khashyatul muraqaba. Khashyatul muraqaba is fearing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is seeing us, is overwatching us. Alam ya'lam bi anna Allah yara. Does he not know that Allah sees? So whoever knows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is looking at him, is seeing him, Allah knows what's deep inside his, his heart or what he says in public, Allah knows it all. So if someone knows this, if someone has this 
idea with him always that Allah is seeing him, how can he disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The third part of fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, the highest actually form of uh, fearing Allah. It's khashiyatul mushahada. And al mushahada is that you know, you feel that you are always with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You feel that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is over looking at you. Tanzur ila Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the highest maqam of ihsan. An ta'bud Allah ka'annaka tarah, fa'in lam takun tarah, fa'innahu yarak. So you are for sure uh, 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 certain that there will be a day of judgment, that there will be a day where we will all be standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whoever uh, uh, believes in the day of judgment, knowing that the day of judgment is unseen, and knowing that for sure this day of judgment is going to happen, so this is faith. This faith uh, pushes someone to, to, to certainty, to, to being so sure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with us, with us in this dunya. Allah is overwatching us in this dunya. So if, he, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, does... Uh, uh, veils someone in this dunya, it doesn't mean that he doesn't know what happened. No, it means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving a chance for the one who disobeyed him to go back to himself and to realize how bad that thing that he has done and uh, that he has to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. And the more sins someone does, the more he makes istighfar, the more he, the more he does repentance, then Allah will accept him. Someone should not get despaired. Someone should not say, oh, I have a lot of sins. I don't know how to meet Allah. I don't know how to, what will happen to me. But a person should not have despair in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once we know the story of a man, he was, he was not a good person. And when he, it was his uh, death, uh, when he was at his deathbed, he told his, he ordered, he ordered his children to uh, burn him after he dies and to take the ashes and to throw it in different areas a little bit in the sea, a little bit in the forest, a little bit in the garden, a little bit here, a little bit there. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked him, why did you do that? He said, I, I had fear that you would be angry with me. And we know that some uh, once Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, لا يجتمع خوفان. Two fears will not be at the same time for someone. Uh, uh, someone will have fear either in this dunya, so he will do good to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala happy with him, or he will have fear in the akhirah because he didn't fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the dunya, and he is afraid, he is scared of hellfire when he realizes that this is reality. This is what will happen to him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <clears throat> is saying, uh, Allah is talking about fearing him. So whoever fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in dunya, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will save him in the akhirah. 
Allah knows everything, whether we what is concealed or what, whether what is known. So we have to learn how to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts with the uh, companionship of those people who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we learn from them. And Allah mentioned that in, in Surah Al-Kahf, Ayah 28, when he says, وَاصْبِرْ نَفْسَكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَدَاتِ وَالْعَشِيِّ يُرِيدُونَ وَجْهَا And keep yourself patient by being with those who call upon their Lord in the morning and in the evening, seeking his countenance. So we have to seek Allah's pleasure. We have to know that Allah is pleased with us. So we have to learn from the people who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there are so many ways that we have to be careful about. We have to, to, to be careful about our money. Is it lawful? Is it, uh, ha have we collected our money completely without any uh, doubt that our money is lawful? Some people, if they are working and their boss is not there, they do not do ihsan in their, in their work. They say, okay, this, this is okay. But if, the, if their boss is there, then they would do it perfectly and they would overdo it. So this is one thing. This is fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not fearing people. It's fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes people would have pride in themselves. So when they look at uh, custodians, they would say, oh, we are better than those people. This is pride. This is not, there is, this is so bad. We have to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that whoever gave us the rank that we are in, Allah is able to take this out, this away and make us lower than the other people. So we have to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that, that should be especially when we are alone. We fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we are praying at night. So when, when we are doing our night prayer, then everyone is asleep. This is exactly the time that there is no one watching us. It's only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we read the Quran at night, we, we contemplate, we, we reflect on the ayahs of the Quran, then we, we are doing that only because fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People, people would read the Quran and they would think about it and they would cry. They would cry when they understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meant, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. What... So they would remember, this is the time when people are alone with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we know Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith, سَبْعَةٌ يُظِلُّهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي ظِلِّهِ يَوْمَ لَا ظِلَّ إِلَّا ظِلُّهُ رَجُلٌ ذَكَرَ اللَّهَ خَالِيًا فَفَاضَتْ عَيْنَاهُ There are seven people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seven groups of people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will shade them in the day of judgment. One of these groups is a person who remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and cries because of the, of the khashya, of fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That person would cry because he missed some work. He missed some, uh, some, some days that he didn't do good work. He missed some, 
some some points that he didn't get um, uh, good deeds in in those days. He would fear Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. He would fear Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, as he says, "Qad aflah al mu'minun al hum fi salatihim khashiyun." Certainly, will the believers have succeeded? Those who are during their prayers humbly submissive. And the heart does not show or does not practice this fear, this khushu'a, this submissiveness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, unless this heart fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for those people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَهُمْ مَغْفِرَةٌ وَأَجْرٌ كَبِيرٌ Let's Let's see another point that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about those people who fear him, they fear something very important. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment, he will, he will get to those who have done deeds, but those those actions, those deeds, Allah will make them as dust dispraised. Why? Because their intention was not good. Because they associated other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with their intentions. So they missed the reward because of having the, in, the, uh, uh, the intention not pure. So the righteous people would fear that their actions will not be accepted. رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه ذلك لمن خشي ربه But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with him. That is for whoever has feared his Lord. Fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the key to get his, to, to, to make him pleased with us. So the question now is asked, how do we fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We just mentioned uh, to be with those who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be in the presence of those who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so to learn from them. Another point is, to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And again, we need someone to show us the word, to show us the path of fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the third point is, we have to read the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not only to read it, but to understand it also. Because the more you understand of the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more fear you will have to, towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then we have also to, to think of the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. And the more we know, the more we realize how, how lucky we are, how uh, things are prepared for us in the most beautiful, amazing way. Then we feel that deep inside our heart, we fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to disobey him after. We feel ashamed to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after he has blessed us with so many gifts. For those who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will have forgiveness. They will be forgiven. And they will have great reward. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be pleased with those people who feared him in this dunya. 
وأسر قولكم أو اجهروا به إنه عليم بذات الصدور Conceal your speech or publicize it Indeed Allah is knowing of that within the breasts, within the heart Allah knows everything whether we mentioned it or whether we kept it inside whether we kept it for ourselves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows, knows what is what we are thinking of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows whether we told anybody or we kept that to ourselves and then in the day of judgment وَحُصِّلَ مَا فِي الصُّدُورِ and that within the hearts is obtained the, the people of Quraysh, the non-believers of Quraysh, used to plot against Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, And they used to say, hey, today we are whispering so that no one will, will know what we are doing. So nobody would tell Muhammad about what, what's going on. But what will happen? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what's in their hearts and knows what they are uh, mocking, what they are plotting. So he would send Jibreel alayhi salam to tell Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam what's going on. And in so many, so many incidents that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, uh, some, some of the people who, who used to, uh, who, were, who did that um, gathering, uh, silently who did that gathering alone they one of them one of the people would come to say the muhammad and say the muhammad would tell him you said this and you said this and and this is what you are planning to do they know that sayyidna muhammad is always telling the truth and they knew that nobody, none of them, told him what happened. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what's in the heart, knows what's in our thoughts. And we have to raise our children to this. We have to raise our children to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah is always overwatching people. We have to instill these ideas in the mind, in the heart of our children. Does he who created not know? While he is the subtle, he is the acquainted. He knows. He knows us deep inside and out loud. He knows everything. Whatever we say, he knows. Whatever we think of, he knows. If someone <clears throat> built a new uh, uh, instrument, let's say, let's take uh, someone, someone uh, developed a new car. He knows all the secrets of this car. So Allah knows. Allah created us all and he knows everything about us all. Sometimes you say something and people would understand it in a different way other than what you said. This is not what you said, but they would say, oh, you meant this. Wait a minute. What you meant is deep in your heart. And no one knows what's in the heart except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, we have to take the outer, the outer thing. And we have to leave the intentions to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because he is the only one who knows what's inside the heart. Who knows what the intentions, the real intentions are. So be aware of the whisper of the shaitan. Shaitan would 
beautify the bad things. But Allah is the one who knows what goes inside our, ourselves. Allah is the subtle. What does this mean? Sometimes you feel that if you stepped just one, one, if you take one more step, then an accident would have happened. Who prevented you from taking that step? The subtle. Allah, Allah Tlif. So Allah gives you the different methods of khair with ways that you yourself don't know. He is the subtle. He is Allah Tlif. He is the acquainted. He knows everything before it happens. He knows everything while it happens. He knows everything after it happens. But because he is the subtle, he gives chances for people who did something bad just to repent and to ask him for forgiveness. And he will forgive them. هو اللطيف الخبير هو الذي جعل لكم الأرض ذلولا فامشوا في مناكبها وكلوا من رزقه وإليه النشور Allah is the one who made the earth tame for you He subjected the earth for you, for the earth for you. So walk among its slopes and eat of his provision and to him is the resurrection if we look at the earth, we have to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's still, it's not moving. Imagine that we cannot, we cannot stay still because the earth is shaking every now and then. Disasters will happen. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, tamed the earth for us. He subjugated the earth for us so that we live on it, so that we benefit from it. Allah has created us from, from dirt, and we are all going to be buried in dirt inside this earth. So you have to go in this earth. You have to seek provision. You have to seek knowledge. You even can go from place to place just to see the, the wonders that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created. And learn and rem remember that, take it, take just a, an easy thing. Just think about it. If you, if you go around, if you have a walk, you will see trees, you will see birds, you will see uh, uh, the uh, um, butterflies, you will, see, you will see everything around you. Remember that the whole universe is saying SubhanAllah. Trees say SubhanAllah. Pebbles say SubhanAllah. Stones say SubhanAllah. Everything is saying SubhanAllah. Shouldn't we ourselves say subhanallah? Whenever you see something nice, something beautiful, something, just say subhanallah. So you are on this, on this earth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, spread people all over in this earth. So if you leave your hometown, if you travel, if you, if you are to settle in another place, then be sure that you are doing And be always prepared that wherever you are, 
you need to spread the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You need to teach the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you feel you cannot, if you feel you are not able, but you have to be sure to be a good model to people, to be righteous people. So that people, even if they don't know your religion, they would say, mashallah, they would say, oh, these are good people. We have to learn from them. So practice good manners. Because this, these, these manners that you are practicing, they reflects the religion you are following. So just enjoy the, the rizq that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. Travel, go here and there and eat and but when you have fun, you have to remember that wa ilayhi minushur. We are all going back to him. So when we are enjoying the, these bounties, we have to keep in mind that he is the one who gave everything to us. We have to keep in mind that we have to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to keep in mind that we have to be good people. We have to, 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 uh, to have in mind that we will be tested in this life, on this earth, so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward or will punish those who do good or do bad, those who succeed or those who, who fail. We are all going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he, he created us of the dirt of the earth. Then we are going to be buried in this earth. And we will come back to him. Do you feel secure? That he who holds authority in the heaven would not cause the earth to swallow you and suddenly it would shake or it would sway? Do you feel secure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not uh, ask the, will not order the earth just to swallow everyone on it? So the, the stillness of the earth, of this earth that we are living on, increases our tawheed, increases our, our faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So don't get secure that if you live on, on this earth and if you don't follow the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he will not destroy you these people. We've seen that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have destroyed the people, the, the previous nations, when they, dis, when they disobeyed him and when they belied his, his um, messengers. Or do you feel secure that he who holds authority in the heaven would not send against you a storm of stones, then you would know how severe was my warning. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has destroyed nations with storms, with storms. So those storms are full of stones. This storm by itself is a, a huge punishment. Imagine that this storm is filled up with stones also. And with this, it's a reminder that when it's the time of punishment, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to accept, to accept the repentance of people. Because the, the chance is lost. 
ولقد كذب الذين من قبلهم فكيف كان نكير <coughs> and already had those before them denied and how terrible was my reproach so من قبلهم means before the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the nation of Nuh alayhi salam, the nation of Fir'aun, the nation of Lut, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them a chance, but they did not use that chance. So he was so upset with them. He was so angry with them. وَكَذَلِكَ أَخْذُ رَبِّكَ إِذَا أَخْذَ الْقُرَى وَهِيَ ظَالِمَةٌ إِنَّ أَخْذَهُ أَلِيمٌ شَدِيدٌ And thus is the seizure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he seizes the cities while they are committing wrong. Indeed, Allah's seizure is painful and severe. So after saying this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us an order to look at the beauty of this universe. So he says, أَوَلَمْ يَرَوْا إِلَى الطَّيْرِ فَوْقَهُمْ صَافَّاتٍ وَيَقْبِضْهُمْ مَا يُمْسِكُهُنَّ إِلَّا الرَّحْمَانِ إِنَّهُ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ بَصِيرٌ Do they not see the birds above them with wings outspread and sometimes folded in? None holds them aloft except the most merciful. Indeed he is. Of all, of all things, seeing. So Allah is saying, just look up at the sky and see the birds flying. Sometimes you see that their wings are outspread and sometimes the wings are folded. So who kept these, were, these birds in the sky? Take another example. Look at the aircrafts. When an airplane is in the, in the sky, with 300 people on, on board, what, what is it? It's, let's say, uh, a tube, a metal tube that has people inside. Should it not be for the uh, caring of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is keeping this, this aircraft in the sky? Some people would say, oh, the wings and the uh, engines. Yes, that's right. But who, who is keeping these things moving in the sky? La ilaha illallah. The subtle, al-latif, al-khabir. Say subhanAllah. When the computer of the aircraft um, uh, is damaged, so all these um, engines will not work. At that point, no power would prevent this aircraft from falling. No one. The pilot is there. The uh, co-pilot is there. They are holding. They are do, uh, doing all they can. But no one can hold this aircraft from falling down. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not will that this aircraft stays in the, in the sky. Same thing for the birds. Look at the ayahs. Allah, look at the earth. He says, look at, unzuru ila al -ard. So with these, with all these examples, we say, look and look at the earth. Okay, with everything that Allah has created on this earth. Then look at the skies with everything that Allah has created and placed in the skies, the moon, the stars, the sun, everything. Then look at what is in between the earth and the sky. So the whole universe is is beautiful, is amazing. Everything is saying SubhanAllah. So say SubhanAllah to the one who made things moving and to the one who made things st uh, still. Who, who, did, who holds our hearts, who prevented our hearts from breaking when some of our 
loved ones die or when uh, uh, some money is lost. Who keeps our heart just uh, uh, doing the, the exact movement that Allah wants? Who is doing that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is controlling the, the number of heartbeats. So it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. Ma yumsikuhunna illa rahman So no one holds anything except the most merciful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most merciful to ourselves, to our hearts, to our uh, to, to, to us than anything else. Then when we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we say, when we make dua, we say, Allahumma ya Rahman, la takilna ila anfusina tarfata'ayn, wa la aqalla min thalik, wa aslih lana sha'nana kulla. Oh Allah, the most merciful, do not entrust us to ourselves, even for a blink of an eye, not even less than that, and rectify our, our affairs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he was so worrying about his nation, he says, do you want me to give you the, the uh, uh, do you want me to make you the one who will take care of the ummah, of your ummah? And, and Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, no, ya Allah, you are most, more merciful than me to them. You're merciful to them. He knows everything. So, what's going on? Or who is it that could be an army? An army for you to aid you other than the most merciful. The disbelievers are not, but in delusion. So who is around you? Who is for you? Who is this army if Allah can, who can uh, prevent Allah from destroying you? Who can save you? No one. Everything in this universe was created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the one who is created cannot, cannot stop the creator. And that's why we say, why? Because be with Allah, then the whole universe will be uh, will be for you, will be with you, because Allah is with you. If Allah should give you victory, if Allah should give you aid, if Allah should give you anything good, no one can ever overcome you. They or the non-believers are just uh, uh, they are just pride. They know that they don't want to believe. They don't want to, to, to obey. And of course the shaitan has made these things good for them. أَمَّنْ هَذَا الَّذِي يَرْزُقُكُمْ إِنْ أَمْسَكَ رِزْقَهُ بَلَّجُّوا فِي عُتُوٍّ وَنُفُورٍ Or who is it that could provide you if he withheld his provision? But they have persisted in isolence and aversion. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala holds provision, who is, gonna, who is going to provide for you? And we mentioned this, provision does not mean only money. Allah gave us eyesight. 
Allah gave us the lungs. Allah gave us the kidneys. Allah gave us hands. Allah gave us feet. Then we go to other than the creator. We go to, an to another creation and we leave the creator. If Allah gives you, no one is going to stop the giving of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if Allah does the, prevents you, no one is going to make you rich with all means. But they have persisted in pride and in being turning away. They don't want, they don't want to believe. أَفَمَنْ يَمْشِي مُكِبًّا عَلَى وَجْهِهِ أَهْدَى أَمَّنْ يَمْشِي سَوِيًّا عَلَى صِرَاطٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ Then is, the, uh, uh, is one who walks fallen on his face, bending down to earth, better guided, or one who walks erect on a straight path? So that first person walks as if he is in a... Rukur state, bending. He looks at the earth. He goes right and left. So is that better? Or the one who, who walks, uh, uh, his head is up and he, his back is straight. He knows, he, he knows where he is going. He goes straight. He doesn't go right or left. We know that in... Uh, 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 when uh, the, the journey of, uh, of Isra and Mi'raj, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what did he do? He was going up the skies, but he was not going right or left. مَا زَاغَ الْبَصَرُ وَمَا طَغَى The sight of the Prophet did not swerve, nor did it transgress its limit. And this is a lesson for us. The path is straight, but the dunya has its arrows. To, headed towards us. We shouldn't pay attention to anything. We have a goal. We have to go straight to our goal. Don't go right or left. The path that leads to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is straight. It's only one. It is one, only one path. And it will lead to Al-Jannah. But for that who is not uh, on the right path, he will feel that he is always uh, humiliated. Uh, he is always ashamed of his actions. And always remember this point that the first step of uh, disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so hard. But when someone walks, takes that step, then everything after it will be easy. But if, if someone's heart is clean, then he will know every time, every now and then, he will remember his sin and he will feel so humiliated that he disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that person would make istighfar and go on. Repent. Feel sorry that the person will feel sorry that he disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قُلْ هُوَ الَّذِي أَنْشَأَكُمْ وَجَعَلَ لَكُمُ السَّمْعَ وَالْأَبْصَارَ وَالْأَفْئِدَةَ قَلِيلًا مَا تَشْكُرُونَ So say, it's he who has created you and made you and made for you hearing and vision and heart, made for you intellect. Little you are grateful. Ya Muhammad, Tell those who disbelieved in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who associate other than other God than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, tell them Allah has created you. <clears throat> Allah has created you in the wombs of your moms. Then you were born into this life. Then you became uh, uh, strong and uh, powerful. And then you became old people. Allah gave you the the hearing, Allah gave you the sight, Allah gave you the heart, Allah gave you the, the intellect. And these are all the things that you would receive knowledge with. And after that, you believe you you spend, you you obey someone other than Allah. You believe in other than Allah. 
Is this how you thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You fear people and you don't fear Allah? You feel that people would see you doing something not lawful and then you don't fear Allah? Don't use your intellect that Allah has given you for bad things. Don't use the, the uh, uh, ability to listen. Don't use this, this blessing to listen to something other than the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, other than something other than uh, something not good. No. Listen to what to Allah's order and fulfill them. And don't use your eyes to see something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want you to see. Just think of these blessings and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How do we thank him? Just we use these blessings to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Attend the uh, knowledge gatherings, attend uh, dhikr gatherings, listen to Allah's orders, fulfill Allah's orders, read uh, the, the book of Allah, understand the book of Allah, apply what's in the book of Allah, use these blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us just for his pleasure, just to make him pleased with us. وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم إنا نسألك من خير ما سألك منه عبدك ونبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من شر ما استعاذك منه عبدك ونبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته